This house is ill. It's been diagnosed as having rising damp. Like all modern homes, it already has a built-in defence against just that, something called a damp-proof course. But it must have failed, because these people are injecting another one. Every week, thousands of householders take the same treatment. Tim and Claire did. Getting the damp sorted was a condition of their mortgage. The company they chose, Rent-A-Kill. So they came in, Rent-A-Kill, they did their damp proof course. Did that solve the problem? Yeah. Well, we, we sort of looked at the wall um, for a year and it didn't seem to change at all. And we got them back in. Um, it was almost a year after they mm, injected it, it. Yeah, it was a year. Because we thought we'd leave it a year to dry out, because that's what we assumed, and people sort of said, oh, it takes about a year. And then it didn't dry out. Maybe it never needed an injection at all. Maybe they just wasted £1,500. The damp was still there. So they call rent -a kill again. Mmm, said rent -a kill and injected another damp-proof course. Now it said waterproof plaster was needed as well. That would cost another £1,300. Tim and Claire refused. A year on, and the damp's still there. How do you feel about it now? <laughs> well, frustrated that uh, the problem isn't solved, um, and very angry that they, that they just seem to be um, completely um, evasive. Saying that, that injecting rising damp-proof courses can, can have somebody for two years waiting for the problem to be solved. You have to allow the time for the plaster to dry out anyway, and that can be up to 12 months. I mean, it will not just go away overnight, just putting a damp course in. Do you know the, where the water's coming from? And We're not sure place. totally where the water's coming from there. We think there is rising damp, and that's why we put the second rising damp course in, to ensure that, sort of, knock that one out. But you still don't know where the water's coming from? No, not exactly, no. It could come from the other side of the wall. But that's quite important, isn't it? For instance, if it's come from a broken water main, you'd want that repaired. That isn't then a rising damp problem, it's not a DPC problem. Well, basically, what you seem to be saying is that you're not interested where the water's come from. We're interested in the waters come from if the rising dam situation is not solved. What could be going on? If Tim and Claire really had rising damp, the thought that moves up through the brickwork, why weren't the injections sorting it out? Were there others in the same boat? David and Vicky's new home. They didn't think it had damp at all. Their mortgage company did. Its surveyor said there were excessive damp levels, so they called in a damp-proof company. He used a, a moisture meter, basically, that he put against the wall, and um, as he put it against the wall, it went off the scale. It was sort of screaming at us, and, you know, it's in the red light, and you just, it just makes you panic, that you think that, it, you know, it's some horrible, serious sort of water damage there, or something like that, so... Lucky them, though. They're in Lewisham, so Mike's come to give them a second opinion. So it's mainly just restricted it's to just the bay. basically to the, yeah, the front bay. And, and, and was that the whole bay? Yes, All it is. All the way yeah. around? Yeah. Except for where the radiator is. Right. Just... Mike didn't rely on the moisture meter. He went straight to the middle of the wall, where rising damp's supposed to be rooted. Here we've got 1%, quite normal for this type of brick. So deep into the brick wall, it is actually quite dry. It doesn't sound like excessive damp levels. And outside, a clue to what the real well, problem this is. Interesting. Is. What can you tell us about this? Well, I was informed that maybe lowering the ground level might help reduce the dampness. Now, the fact that this ground level has now been lowered and you've got the obstruction away from the damp proof course would account for why the moisture in the brickwork is quite normal. Bridging again. Not a concrete plinth this time, but the ground itself, overlapping the existing damp-proof course. So, this was your cure, not a chemical damp-proof course injection. <laughs> Brilliant. And what, what we'll do now is to, uh, we'll prepare a report on our visit today, Brilliant. and uh, we'll send it off to you, and you can give that to your building society, and okay. hopefully that will satisfy them. The mortgage company accepted Mike's analysis. So, this is what the industry relies on. It's a moisture meter. Now, if it goes into the red on the scale, it means you've got damp. So let's see what sets it off. Now, don't tell me this is damp as well. Surely not the camera. 
Maybe I need a temperature course. Mike's not the only one who can't find rising damp. One academic built walls standing in tanks of water. He left them for three years. He couldn't get damp to rise unless he used a very special mortar. The only way that I've been able to replicate rising damp is by using mortar that contains no cement, a very small amount of lime. It's basically just uh, brick dust and chalk, like this, this very soft material here. And this, this will allow damp to rise up a small way. So I've had to produce a special mortar and use special soft bricks, and I've had to stand the walls in constant standing water. So what this has shown me is that the normal British house in the normal British climatic conditions does not have rising damp. I would go so far as to say that rising damp is a myth. It does not exist. But all these companies can't be wrong. There are hundreds of them. Well, it's like the emperor's new clothes, isn't it? If you say rising damp doesn't exist, then people say, well, how come all these companies exist to treat it? So the damp industry, they get it wrong time and time again. Householders waste millions of pounds every year having damp injections they don't even need. How much longer will we tolerate being taken for a ride by an entire industry? The early Victorian properties, they didn't suffer from rising damp. And then we find in the early 60s the invention of electrical moisture meters. And then, hey presto, an explosion of rising damp uh, throughout the country, which goes on to this day. Why are they doing it? Are they doing it because they're completely ignorant, they don't know the truth? I, I think really they must know the truth. But again, where, where the, the lack of integrity comes into it is where they are solely relying on the results of one instrument, and that instrument being the electrical moisture meter. If they continue to do that, they're, they're going to find rising damp time after time after time.